One of the hardest things that I've learned about learning the game of chess is learning what to do in the middle game. So I've been going through this book, Improve Your Chess Pattern Recognition, which helps you identify key moves and motifs in the middle game. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at the not so innocent bystander. It's a position that you can only achieve with white, with black having a castled king on the king side, and that's moving your knight over there to h5. So let's just look into that position and how you can use it in your middle game. So we have here a game between two international masters. In this position here, white is to move. The king just moved and you have like a advanced pawn here you have two knights on the board you have a lot of pieces pointed at the king side and so what white does is they move over here on h5 attacking this pawn here and so in this position as white what you're planning on doing is getting that queen over here and attacking that queen side so what black does is they go h6 white then goes to attack the queen here the queen has to hide over here on a4 and then you start bringing these knights into the game trying to attack this pawn structure here and so what black does is they trade off the rooks and the queen comes here taking the thing and they have the free pawn but really it's a mistake because you have knight to g4 here now attacking this pawn the better move in this position instead of taking this pawn here by the queen was to go knight takes e5 here the reason being after d takes e5 you take this pawn here and now you're forking these two knights hard tactic to see but that was the best move in this game so what we get instead is after this queen to h3 you get the knight attacking the g6 pawn here and launching the king side attack the queen comes back to try to help on that side and you, you can't just you can't just take with here or here because let's say you take g to, takes h right thinking that's pretty standard you have queen to h6 knight to e5 and then you have the checkmate here there's nothing to stop checkmate and then it is this position if the knight takes here you're easily winning after the pawn takes here and white has a hard time stopping this it's completely crushing so the only move to move in this position is to go king to h8 here it's the only thing that wins and White just moves its pieces up in the board. And so what we have here is the rook moves over. The queen comes here for the killing below. And what is white going to do other than push the pawn? But at this point, the queen's now moving here with the checkmate here on h7. You have to push the pawn up. And then even then, you still sidestep. And you're getting the checkmate pretty quickly unless, you know, there's some defensive resource by black, which he obviously finds. You lose a piece and white is easily winning with that nine point advantage to the engine. And it's all due to that innocent bystander, which isn't so innocent over here on h5 that is completely attacking that king's side. So in our second game here, we're going to look at this not so innocent bystander again. We're looking at white's position here. It's very similar to the last one. We have the queen and the knights here and black has most of his pieces over here on the queen side. So what we need to do is we need to move that knight over here on h5, targeting this king side pawn and then looking to get the queen into the game. The thing also to note in this position is this e5 pawn makes it real hard for getting black pieces in the game. Like you can't get this bishop in. This bishop is uh, pretty much limited in the fact that this pawn here is denying those squares. You can't just move and get the queen over. So black is really uh, having some issues just because of the c5 pawn really making this position rock solid so what black does in this position is to go knight to c5 here giving back the pawn to complete the development and so after white takes the pawn here bishop comes over here just trying to develop and get the more rooks into the game and then the queen now is moving here for the kill shot so black retreats the bishop over here to af8 trying to you know defend this pawn white now is enjoying a great spatial advantage its pieces are very much into the black's territory and black has has a lot of issues with trying to get its pieces into the game and so white plays b4 here looking to attack this knight and the queen takes b4 we go knight to f5 seemingly throwing caution out here why is this move good well can't you just take on e takes f5 yeah but then you have bishop f7 check the king has to move to h8 and then you have the queen takes b4 here and you just lost the queen and end the game so here, the only safe place for the king to go is to h8. You then just sack the knight, which is a typical square that you, that you sack the knight on with this innocent bystander position because you're opening up the king's side here. Black goes to attack this bishop, and the queen just comes here to looking to attack this pawn. So the bishop has to take here, right? And then you take the knight here, the king takes there. And then because of this pawn that was like keeping that position together is now a really good ally when in this king here, the king retreats. And now you're bringing the rook in the game looking to go here like you can completely sack this no big deal and so black has to trade the king queen for the rook you have a, a rook and a queen versus two rooks and a bishop and a knight it's materially pretty okay but white is going to probably win this position after taking this pawn here bishop to c6 and in this position white's pass pawn here is probably going to cause a lot of worries for black so in our last game here we're going to be looking at, we have the castled king side here. You have the knight looking to go into h5 and you have kind of white's pieces ready to kind of launch their own attack here on that king. 
And so what white does is they go the not so innocent bystander, bishop to d4, looking to one attack this pawn here, and then also defend this g7 square here. And the queen just says, cool, I'm just gonna go here and attack this pawn. The queen comes over here looking to prevent bishop to h6, which becomes an even bigger issue here. But the right move in this position was to actually go king to h8, just preventing that entirely. So we come back here to queen to c5, which was a mistake, trying to prevent bishop to h6 here. And bishop to e3 instead, taking the defender off of this square. And so what black has to do is they take the bishop here. White comes out with a great move here, cutting off the bishop, because if you take there, you drop the queen. And the bishop has nothing to do other than just sit there. The queen tries to trade itself off, but you're, you're losing a queen for the rook. Bishop takes e5. You can now defend this, but it's just not going to work because you're going to end up sacking the knight over here on g7 if the bishop takes here. You then have this and you're 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 having some issues. You're having some issues. You have main one, right? So things didn't look good and that not so innocent bystander paired with that queen on the castled king side, especially if all of black's pieces are on the queen side, you're gonna have a lot of fun attacking your opponent's queen. So in our next middle game position, we're gonna be going over the lost bishop. That video will be here and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.